I want to get back also to this this whole religion thing. It's it's uh, I, I'm frankly very concerned. I uh, initially when the Supreme Court came out and said, "Ah, eh, it's just tradition," you know, the the Senate opens with a prayer. What's the big deal? My first response was, "Yeah, you know, what's the big deal?" But once you start breaking down the lines, you know, it's the old to uh, get the camel's nose into the edge of the, edge of the tent uh, uh, metaphor. I'm concerned that, and, and in fact, I, I think, frankly, we, we passed this way back during the Bush senior administration when Bush Jr. negotiated deals. Actually, it was during the Reagan, the second year, the second Reagan, Reagan's second term. And Bush Jr. was the liaison between his daddy's upcoming presidential campaign and the fundamentalist Christian community. And they started doing these faith-based initiatives that became George Bush Sr.'s Thousand Points of Light, where it's like, basically, let's give government money to religious groups. And Jerry Falwell was there with his hands out, and he became a multimillionaire in the process, and Pat Robertson is now a billionaire. And, I mean, you, you've got all these religious guys who got really, really rich off this, and a lot of it was government money, and continues to be. And now we're giving money to, uh, to, to, uh, secular, or to religious church, schools, um, to, to give religious indoctrination and education to kids. And it just it, it's going on and on and on, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And Bill Clinton continued it, by the way. And, in fact, expanded the program. Because, hey, you know, votes. And then George W. Bush put it on super steroids. And Obama has inherited it and hasn't done anything to stop it. And so I think that we have a problem here in this country. And like I started to say in my, in my uh, discussion with the bishop, Jefferson was constantly worried that, that the priests were going to get inside the government. In fact, he, uh, you know, the, uh, I've, I've told this story before, but it, it is so worth repeating. I live about a 20 minute walk from the Jefferson Memorial. I, Louise and I live on a, in a boat, a little cabin, you know, 1986 Chris Craft cabin cruiser on the, on the Washington Channel, in the Washington Channel. The Washington Channel dead ends into this pond in front of this pool in front of the Jefferson Memorial. And so on a nice weekend day, Louise and I will just walk down there because it's the Jefferson Memorial. <laughs> you know. and, there, and if you ever, you know, ever make it to D.C., it's really worth going to see. And there's this little circular saying of Jefferson etched into the dome above this giant 15-foot statue of Thomas Jefferson in the middle of the memorial. And it says, hang on just a second, wrong page. It says, I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny imposed upon the mind of man. That's all it says. Now, you would think, you know, and, and it's obviously a quote from Jefferson, and you would think that basically what he's saying is, I'm a Bible-thumping Christian, and I've sworn in, on the altar of God hostility against anything that's going to be a tyranny over the minds of men. Context is everything, my friends. Let me read you the actual letter from which that quote comes. This was in 1800. Thomas Jefferson was vice president of the United States. He was challenging John Adams to become president. Adams wanted to run for a second term. Jefferson ran against him. He was vice president. Jefferson beat him. There's a book coming out this fall called The Revolution of 1800 by Dan Sisson, and with a little help from me, but mostly Dan Sisson. He's a brilliant historian. You're going to love this book. We will be talking about it a lot this fall. And The Revolution of 1800 was the election of Thomas Jefferson. So here's... Here is this... And so Ben, ben Rush was a good friend of Jefferson's. He was a doctor position. And he was a deist. He was not a Christian. He, 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 he was a deist. He believed that, you know, something, some 
incredible intelligence, started it all, and established the, the laws of nature, and it, nature has just been rolling along ever since then. And so Jefferson, a couple of months before the election, just two months before the election of 1800, so that would be like September of 1800, writes this note, this letter to Ben Rush, and in it he asks him, don't let anybody see this letter. This letter didn't come out until Jefferson was dead. And here it is. Remember the quote that's at the top of the Jefferson Memorial. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny imposed upon the mind of man. Okay, that's the quote. Here is the letter. Dear Sir, I promised you a letter on Christianity, which I have not forgotten. I do not know that it would reconcile the genus Irritable Vatum, which is Latin for the species of angry priests, who are all in arms against me. Their hostility is on too interesting a ground to be softened. The delusion on the clause of the Constitution, he's talking here about the First Amendment, the delusion on the clause of the Constitution, which, while it secured the freedom of the press, covered also the freedom of religion, has given to the clergy a very favorite hope of obtaining an establishment of a particular form of Christianity throughout the United States. And as every sect believes its own form, the one true one, everyone perhaps hoped for his own, but especially the Episcopalians and the Congregationalists. And then he turns to his being elected. He refers to that as the returning good sense of our country, if he gets elected. Because yeah, he, he referred to John Adams' presidency as the time of witches, you'll recall. Anyhow, he says, the returning good sense of our country threatens abortion to their hopes, the priests. And the preachers believe that any portion of power confided in me, such as being elected president, will be exerted in opposition to their schemes. And they believe rightly, for I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. But this is all they have to fear from me, and enough, too, in their opinion. End of quote. The context rather changes the quote, does it not? I can't tell you how many right-wingers have come on this. Program. Oh, yeah, America was a Christian nation. Jefferson was a Christian. He said he swore on the altar of God. Hostility against the tyranny over the mind. The tyranny he was talking about was religion. He went on. He was, uh, this was uh, in his autobiography. Quoting from Jefferson's autobiography, he says, where the preamble to the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, which is, by the way, one of the three things on his tombstone that he was most proud of, that he was the author of. That, the creation of the University of Virginia, and the Declaration of Independence. Doesn't even say that this guy was president. Right? Anyhow, back to his autobiography. He says, where the preamble to the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom declares that coercion is a departure from the plan of the holy author of our religion. An amendment was proposed by inserting the word Jesus Christ. So it should read, a departure from the plan of Jesus Christ, the holy author of our religion. The insertion, so he's talking about the debate before the Virginia House of Burgesses. And this is on the Virginia Resolution for Religious Liberty. In other words, the government shall not interfere with your religion. He said, the insertion of Jesus Christ was rejected by a great majority in proof that they meant to comprehend within the mantle of its protection of the Virginia Statute of Religious Freedom. Within the mantle of its protection, the Jew and the Gentile, the Christian and the Mohammedan, the Hindu and the infidel of every denomination. This is from his autobiography. From Notes on Virginia, he says, the legitimate powers of government extend to such actions as only are, are injurious to others. It does me no injury for my neighbor to say there are 20 gods or no god. It neither picks my pocket or breaks my leg. I could go on, but I won't. I just wanted to make a point. I, it really concerns me. When the Supreme Court 
and the preachers of America are conspiring together. As, as Jefferson said, in truth, the alliance between church and state in England has ever made their judges accomplices in the frauds of the clergy.